Hi, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. My name is Anne and I'll be your host and moderator today. Uh, welcome to this session about liberal arts and sciences. We uh, have some household announcements before we introduce ourselves properly. And I see a lot of you have found your way already. When you go to the right side of your screen, you see a poll because we're very curious where you are at the moment. So let us know where you are. Um, and I think it should be visible on your screen as well. It's pretty cool. A lot yeah. of people from all around the world. So many places. Ah, I really see different continents reflected. So that's great already as a start. Um, next to that, you also have the option to ask questions. So when you click on the other tab, you'll be able to ask us questions. And at the end of this session, the second half, we'll have a Q&A with students as well. So uh, feel free to pop your questions into that box and then we will try to tackle all of them if we can, depending on how many there are. <laughs> um, also, if you go to the bottom right corner, you'll see a little yellow um, pop-up thingy with a, a, a speech bubble. And that's a chat and that's operated by a chat operator. Also one of our wonderful students, Sheila. So if you want to chat with us after this session or even during the session, you can pop your questions in there and Sheila is there. Uh, before and after the both sessions that we have today. All right, so far for the household announcements, we keep seeing this grow, so very good that you're finding your way to the box. Um, and while you do that, let's introduce our other panel member. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Juri Reinders. I'm a assistant professor at Leiden University College. I teach mostly in the sustainability major, uh, meaning courses about climate change, earth system science. And I'm also an alumni, actually, after some further education, I went back to LUC to teach, uh, and I graduated in the, the class of 2018, so about five years ago. So he knows all about every single detail, every <laughs> single detail about what it's like to be a, a, a student, a teacher, a lecturer at LUC and yeah. even a residential assistant, even a residential. Yes. Assistant. Yeah, 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 but yeah, we can talk yeah. about yeah. that later. Well, thank you so much for sharing your location with us. I see that uh, Europe, but also Japan is very well represented. I see Tanzania, Turkey, Vietnam, Thailand, Romania. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Keep it coming. We're going to collect the data just because we're very curious about all of you. But we're going to go ahead and get started uh, with the presentation. And I think I'm going to give the floor to uh, Yuri first. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to first uh, take a few moments to describe to you the program, show you what we uh, teach you here at LUC so you have a good understanding of what's uh, going on. I want to start off with an example, actually. Most of you probably have seen pictures like this and this other one uh, over the summer. Uh, the summer has been uh, refacking yeah. with big climatic events. Climate change has been the top priority almost in the newspapers. Um, and Climate change presents us one of these what we call global challenges, and this is the things that we talk about a lot at LUC, uh, the things that we want to teach you about. For example, here you see uh, some wildfires uh, in Greece. There were many tourists, actually also many Dutch tourists, for those of you who are uh, from the Netherlands, uh, that have issues with this. Uh, they had to quit their vacations, but of course it also threatens livelihood here. You see an example of floodings in um, Pakistan, who have also been amplified by climate change. Now, when we talk about climate change, often in the news or in public debates, it's often presented as a sustainability issue, right? There is uh, too much CO2 in the air, and that changes the Earth system, uh, causing all of these big problems. Uh, however, the problem of climate change, the challenge of climate change, is much more diverse than only that. Uh, you can also look at it from a politics point of view, for example. How do we make policy? How do we change society in a way that we can deal with the uh, consequences of climate change and that can even change so to prevent it, to mitigate uh, some of the consequences? Additionally, there is a, there's a global issue, right? Um, many of the people that are displaced by climate change have to migrate, which leads to other problems. Uh, and opportunities as well in different countries. How do we deal with that? That's a, that's a very important uh, aspect of climate change too. There are indigenous people uh, whose culture uh, and history are threatened by climate change. There are uh, global health issues. There's a, a change in the diseases that we see. Uh, when a disaster like this happens, for example, this flood, uh, we see a spike in, in cases of diarrhea, for example, uh, or other uh, very problematic diseases. Um, you see that with a challenge like climate change, there are various perspectives that you can take and there are various things that you need to take under control uh, when we're dealing with that. And it's exactly the type of thing we want to do 
LEC, the type of perspective uh, we take. We, when you come to us, discuss in the first year program these what we call four global challenges, four challenges that we as a program have um, uh, come together as to that we think that can prepare you for some of the uh, things in the future. Uh, the four global challenges that we discuss are peace and justice, diversity, sustainability, and prosperity. You will come across these again when I talk a little bit about the first year program, the courses that you actually take, because these are the foundation of the things that we teach you. Um, you will learn something about what it means to have a peace and just society, uh, what diversity means within our uh, society and how we can foster it and how we can use it. Um, sustainability, how we can transition to a sustainable world in which we can solve issues like climate change and prosperity. How uh, do we make sure that everybody has a basic uh, means to, to live a good life? Uh, now, of course, and, and that's the beauty of our program, these things are not the four independent things. They interact. I've just shown you that with climate change. So, for example, to solve the issue of climate change, you need to live in a just world. Um, and to make sure that prosperity is uh, ensured, we need to make sure that everybody's diversity is also uh, taken into account. So while you're in this program, we try to study this from what we call interdisciplinary perspective. We take all sorts of um, uh, disciplines and we look at these issues from these different disciplines. That's the unique character of uh, LUC, uh, it's particular focus on, again, these global challenges. Now, when you move throughout our program, so if you uh, enter, for example, the second and third year, you're actually going to make more of a focus. Um, here, around the four global challenges, you see uh, our different majors, the different programs within LEC that you can choose uh, to specialize in. I just want to quickly go uh, over all six of them so you have a good understanding of what they mean. Um, I'm going to start on top. Earth, energy, and sustainability, I already quickly mentioned, that's where I do also most of my teaching. So here you really go in depth of what does it mean, what's the theoretical background uh, that I need uh, about the Earth system, about energy systems to, to, to change or to, to tackle these four global challenges. Uh, then we have global public health, where you get a good introduction of epidemiology, for example, uh, uh, some anthropology, but also just the basics of, of biology, like how does a disease work, what is a virus, how does it spread. Um, world politics is a very popular major in our program, uh, where you learn how to uh, maneuver through the politics of, of, of our global world, uh, how does the UN work, how does treaties come to be, uh, and how can we use that, how can we use diplomacy to tackle these four global challenges, these are some of the uh, major questions that are asked there. Uh, international justice, uh, similarly, and of course in Leiden where we have a very strong law uh, program, uh, this has to be uh, part of it, um, how do we make sure that everybody uh, lives in a just world, how do we um, create our, 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 uh, our justice systems? How do we make sure that everybody feels safe? Um, cultural history and society, uh, very close to that diversity. How do we make sure that everybody, uh, or that we learn from each other, uh, from each other's culture, how we preserve that? How does our society work? How do we uh, enable change, uh, right? For most of these four global challenges, there are big changes that need to happen within society. And how does society work? How do we uh, make sure that that happens. And then finally, governance, economics, and development, of course, integral to many of these global challenges. How do we make the policy for that? How does a good policy look like? Uh, and how does that, again, interlace with these other four uh, global challenges and the other majors? These specializations you can choose, and they give you a very nice background to the foundation you already get in our first year program on how some of the, these global challenges work. Um, and we do that within our college, uh, Leiden University College, where we uh, take a liberal arts and sciences approach to your learning. Um, I will just quickly go through this list of what that exactly means, because there's a lot of things that liberal arts and sciences uh, can mean. Um, with us, there's a focus on learning through discovery. So we're not just sitting you down in a lecture hall or a classroom while we talk to you for a few hours and you just remember all the facts that we tell you and then you get an exam where you have a multiple choice uh, type of question uh, and you just 
really hard to try to remember those facts and afterwards you forgot. No, we really want to develop your learning through, as we say, discovery. So together with your professors, you're going to discover these complex issues. Uh, and again, look at it from multiple sides, see what all the complexities uh, are that are in there. Um, but again, a focus on diversity and change. How can we um, go to sol work towards solutions and not only uh, get lost in some of the issues that are there? Uh, that means that you will get a very broad education. Uh, and the risk with that is that it's maybe too broad, right? That you don't really know anything uh, else. In our college, you work. We work in eight-week blocks, uh, and in these eight blocks, you follow, or in these eight weeks, you follow a course, and you go really in depth. So even though you have a very broad understanding of many of these courses, in the course uh, through many of these courses, in these courses, you go in depth on very specific cases, meaning that you learn not only uh, some some particular case, but you also learn how to get yourself familiar with something new in a very quick time, which is great for when you go out of LUC uh, into the real world where you will expect it to do this, right? You have to very quickly adapt. Uh, that's what we mean with broad and in-depth knowledge. Um, we work with real world settings. Uh, we're in The Hague, uh, the city of peace and justice. There are many, many uh, institutes in The Hague that have all these professional uh, professionals that can that can give guest lectures. We try to bring in the real world uh, in that sense, but we also study the real world. There are theoretical models that we can apply to some of these global challenges, uh, ways to think about it, but in the end, uh, many of us want to make a change and we need to see how that can be practical done and we bring that into our education. Um, again, transferable and intellectual skills, I already mentioned uh, you will very of you to learn how to very quickly familiarize with some, some of these important topics, how to um, take a big field of knowledge and summarize that and make yourself familiar with that, but also practical skills. You will also learn how to write, how to present yourself, how to talk to an audience and be engaging, uh, or to program, for example, if that's what you're interested in, how to do statistics and how to uh, summarize big data sets. Um, and there's a big focus in our program on social responsibility. Uh, we want you to be part of the Hague uh, and to, to learn, to get to know the city and to be involved with all of the local issues that are there. We're talking a lot about global challenges, which is very important, but many of these global challenges have local implications. And if you wanna learn how to tackle global challenges, you have to be familiar with these local implications. And we want you to be uh, part of that. That means that there comes a particular type of learning uh, in the program if you want to make sure that all of these liberal arts and science components are met. Um, first of all, as you could have seen in the, uh, as, we, as we mentioned, there are many of you from different countries in this presentation right now, and that's a reflection of what LEC is like. There are many different people from many different nations with different, very different backgrounds uh, that gather at LEC. We have over 50 nationalities and 50% uh, of LUC is international students, which means that when you come into LUC, you're really in a, this diverse place where you can learn a lot from also each other, uh, which we find very important. Secondly, to get to this um, learning through discovery, we have to get to know you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We cannot do this in big lecture hall, as I mentioned. That means that class sizes are small. Uh, we have on average 20 people in a class, which means that you get to know your professor and your professor gets to know you. You're not just a number to us. You're actually a person that has interesting thoughts that we want to uh, know about. Um, the faculty ratio, uh, student ratio at our college is one to 15, which again means that there's a lot of opportunity for, no, for you to work together with faculty, to work together with professors and to even more develop your learning. Now, how does that look like in practice? So I'm just gonna present to you a bit the program structure of the first year so you get an understanding of what your time at LEC could be like. Uh, we have, as I said, four blocks in a year divided up in two semesters. Each block is about eight weeks uh, in which you have a bunch of courses. Now, as I mentioned, the first, the foundation of our program is these global challenges. So you get the global challenge, diversity, sustainability, peace and justice, and prosperity all throughout your first year. These are the basis of the program, the foundation. Additionally to that, we give you, we want to provide you some skills to tackle and to see if, like see about these global challenges so for example we learn you some mathematics uh, 
our data is fi- like our world is filled with data so you need to know how to deal with that so you get statistics in your first block and you get mathematics at the end uh, these are critical components of the program and we want you to to help you express yourself through speaking and thinking in history of philosophy and through writing uh, with academic writing. You see that those are semester-long courses. We really want to focus your attention to that in the beginning. These are, again, foundational uh, for your skill sets. And then the open spaces that you see can be filled with electives, which is all up to you. We offer many, many different types of courses in many, many of these uh, majors that we have. Uh, So this is a place for you to discover what you find very interesting. Uh, Some of you might come to LEC or might go to university into your bachelor and thinking, I know what I want to do. I want to study this program and take these courses, and then I'm going to become this person uh, at the end of the road. I'm going to do this and this job. Uh, You will find that often this changes, right? While you're going to university, you experience different passions from yourself, maybe courses or, or topics that you haven't looked at before that you find very passionate, uh, that you're very passionate about. And we built this into our first year program uh, through these electives. So you can pick a few courses that maybe interest you, maybe things that you had already thought that you would find interesting, maybe things that you didn't think about at all. Uh, and you can explore what your passions are in this first year. If you then go to your second year, um, things change a little bit. Uh, there you pick one of these majors I first already said. Uh, this you can see as sort of a specialization. So you go a bit more in depth in one topic such that you get this broader back, uh, like this very theoretical broad background uh, in one particular case, which you then can apply again to these global challenges. There's of course still a lot of free space for electives. So, oh, that went a little bit too fast. So for you to um, explore again new topics or develop a, a second interest, um, you will do a global citizenship, which helps you again to cultivate these skills of uh, c- uh, cross-cultural relationships. So you can uh, manifest yourself in this international environment. So you can make those social connections uh, that are very important to tackle these local problems and again, global challenges. And at the end of your studies in your third year, you will write a capstone project, which is this bigger research project that really, in which you really show all the things you learned uh, at LEC. Um, while you're at LEC, you're living on our campus. So this is also a unique thing in the Netherlands. Most uh, university programs don't have this. Uh, we have a uh, beautiful building in the city center of The Hague uh, where we offer about 400 studios and in your first two years you will live in one of these together with your peers. Um, so only people that go to LUC are in this building, which means that uh, you're not only uh, learning in the classroom, but also while you're living with, this, uh, with us over the, over the three years that you're at LUC. You interact with the students that may be from, again, different backgrounds, which means that uh, there's a lot of learning there. Uh, you will do uh, assignments that you have from your classes with your peers while you're in the building. It's a very interesting intellectual place, uh, which contributes a lot to, to your time at university. And maybe what's also nice is that the first two years you live on campus and then the third year you go off campus and you really see that students sometimes struggle with that because like, oh, you know, now I have to live on my own. Yeah. But then that's also a really nice step where you get to experiment with, you know, uh, live, having a bit more of a disconnection between the college and your life. So I think it's a really nice transition. Absolutely. I always hear from students that the moment they move out of the building, that's when they really feel like they're living in Holland. That's when yes. they have to bike to, to get to school and everything. That's when they get the Dutch experience. So this yeah. is indeed like, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a great thing. You get the safety of moving to the Netherlands and having already your apartment right in the city center. And then afterwards, you're also able to move out and explore a little bit more how you want to live and how you want do things and explore the Netherlands and The Hague, of course. Yeah. yeah. And of yeah. course, we also have Dutch students in the program. So for them, maybe it's not moving to a new country, but yeah. maybe you're moving to a new city. So it provides a lot of safety and security. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about student life. So basically, the city of The Hague is the perfect location for us to run this program. The University of Leiden was really thinking strategically uh, uh, about where to place the university college. And the, ha- the Hague is known as the International City of Peace and Justice. This 
this is the seat of the Dutch government. You can actually see it in this picture. But it's also uh, a place where a lot of international relations happens. Uh, we have all the embassies here, or most of the embassies. We've got uh, a UN branch, there's NATO, there's the European Space Agency. So a lot of international uh, organizations have decided to house themselves in The Hague. Uh, not to forget, actually, the International Criminal Court. So for the international Absolutely. justice yeah. and law students, a lot of them uh, are really interested in that as well, which also means that you can benefit from that, right? Um, just recently, some of our students went to the criminal court to witness one of the tribunals. So a lot of those things are just right at your doorstep, a bike right away. Um, so The Hague is a great place for that. Um, and then on top of that, uh, oh, well, we already mentioned it already again. And this is actually a picture of the Peace Palace. I didn't know what it looked like before I came to The Hague. Beautiful, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's a really nice, a really nice place. Um, but as you already mentioned, the building where we are is also really close to the city center. So you have very easy access to a fun city life, the shops, the bustling environment. And actually the seat of the Dutch government is really close by, but at the moment they are remodeling. So they're actually right next to our college. So you can sometimes see the ministers uh, walk by. And this is a picture of what on-campus living would look like. Uh, you have a common room as well, where you can hang out with uh, fellow students on your floor. So that really fosters a kind of community uh, environment. This is a picture of the bar that we have in the building. Um, and this is also a place where a lot of the socializing happens. The bar is actually run by students. Um, so that's something you could do besides your studies. We really want to encourage also um, for you to be able to explore your interests outside of the classroom, right? It's a really uh, it's a really stimulating program that really will ask you to think critically and to work hard. But then there's more to life. Um, so a lot of students are very active in sports, but there's a lot of other stuff you can do outside of your studies as well. For example, um, here on the slide, you see a couple of examples of activities that LUC does. In the top uh, left corner, you see our pantomime, which is a really long tradition. One of our students students who is in our panel in a minute she's a very active part of that so she, she can tell you all about it in a minute it's kind of like a musical but there's also a ski trip on here there's the annual or biannual hitchhiking which is all organized by students they pick a location you hitchhike there um, but that's just the tip of the iceberg there are so many events committees activities that you can engage in what was there anything you did besides your studies i organized the dies fatalis which is a sort of the second pantomime of the year, it's the end of the year show. So there's these big shows, these big productions, which are uh, indeed being uh, made together, but also uh, many small sport activities. So there's a lot of, there's a volleyball group, there's a basketball group, a soccer group, any sport you can imagine almost. I think at some point there was even a cheerleading group. So the, everything that you, you want can be found within this student association indeed. Yeah. That's very yeah. cool. Actually, that reminds me yeah. also, there's a tournament where the university colleges of the Netherlands compete right. against each other. Yeah. Yeah. I think LUC won two years ago. For sure. Well, for the sure. students here yeah. don't know. We also don't know, but we won once. Yeah, yeah. We know for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then another feature that's really nice, of course, The Hague is a fairly large city, depending on where you're coming from. If you're living in Istanbul, The Hague will feel small, yes. <laughs> um, but it has half a million inhabitants. It's the third largest city in the Netherlands. But we have nature on our doorstep as well. So the beach is really close by. It's just a 20-minute tram ride. So a lot of students like to go there to decompress, you know, uh, as we say in Dutch, uitwaaien. Absolutely. Get a bit of air in your brain and uh, get new energy for the next day. So there's a lot right on your doorstep if you are a student at Leiden University College. Now, one last piece that we want to talk to you about before we go to the Q&A is, of course, admissions. I know a lot of students are already exploring the admissions process. Some of you might be really worried. So we want to just give you the basics of uh, uh, how we select our students and why we select our students. We won't go too much in depth. Um, we do actually have an online experience day next week where we will have an in-depth admissions session. So if you're very focused on the admissions part, you can join that one as well. Um, so what does admissions look like? Basically, uh, we are looking for students who will thrive in this uh, close-knit, small-scale environment. So in these small-scale classes, there's no hiding behind anyone, which means that we're looking for students who are motivated and who are right fit for this environment. So motivation is one part of it. We have a form on our website for you to fill out where you can uh, let us know a little bit about your motivation for wanting to study here. So that's how we assess whether this actually is the right fit for you, uh, this program, and whether you're really interested. Yeah. 
The academic fit is more about your academic background. So your uh, transcript, the grades that you've achieved, what type of diploma do you have? Um, and those are the main components. We don't have a lot of specific emphasis on subjects. The only subject we pay a little bit more attention to is mathematics. So when you go to our website, you'll have uh, an overview of the mathematics requirements and also what you can do to qualify if you don't meet the math requirements. So don't despair if that's the case. Um, and the other component is the English proficiency. Depending on your background, maybe you already meet the English language requirement because you've had schooling in English, um, or maybe you need to submit an English language test. We accept the standard ones, IELTS and TOEFL, and the requirements for that are also listed very clearly on our admissions page on the LUC website. And the third component is your uh, experiences. We want to know who you are outside of the classroom. What have you done uh, so far alongside your studies? Uh, what are some of the extracurriculars you've engaged? in and again this is a piece that some students get really worried about um, because in some cultures or some uh, situations you may not have had the ability or you may not have known that it was necessary to prepare for this for university don't worry just think critically maybe sit together with a friend a parent a guide or a counselor to draw up a list and look at what you've actually done and we will look at that within your context so if there are circumstances that mean you haven't been able to do a lot outside of your studies we will take that into consideration as well so don't despair just give it a shot we really are looking yeah. for a range of different people from different backgrounds um, and finally we will ask for a reference letter as well and the reference letter will give us a better image of all of these three things so it's written by uh, one of your teachers you then also go through an interview which is the second kind of half of the process so if you meet all the first requirements you'll do an online interview with one of our staff members we can talk to the students later about how scared they were or how easy <laughs> it was to get through this whole process and altogether they make the right fit for liberal arts and sciences i just wanted to quickly also highlight the application deadlines uh, our early bird deadline is on the first of december and the big benefit of applying by then means that you will get considered in the first application round and it means that you'll have an answer towards the end of february beginning of march we have a really clear timeline of this on our website um, your chances of getting in are not higher. It's just that you'll know where you stand earlier on in the process. So if you have the ability to apply before 1st of December, we really encourage you to do that. Um, don't worry if you don't have your uh, grades yet for this final year, because you can submit with your grades from last year's. Um, then we'll make uh, our assessment based on that. If you can't make it by December 1st, then there's still the regular deadline of March 15. So that is also a possibility. And if you want to go more in depth, uh, we will have a Q&A in a, in, in a bit, so don't tune out. We're not at the end yet, um, but I wanted to also let you know there's opportunities to get to know LUC even better. So we're doing an online experience day next Friday, which also will include sample lectures. So if you want to kind of get to know our teachers a bit and see what the teaching is like, that's a really good opportunity. You can visit us on 4th of November during the open day, as well as on the 23rd of November during the experience day, where the 4th of November you can explore all of Leiden University's programs so you can compare. And on the 23rd, again, is an experience day for LUC only, where you have an, a, a sample lecture, you get to meet our staff and students and see the building, uh, etc. Which actually you can see the building on the 4th of November also. All right. Um, I think... That's time to bring our panel in. Yeah, let's do so. Yeah, let's invite the students. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Let's start by uh, asking you to introduce yourselves. Jill. Yeah, so my name is Jill. Um, I come from Portugal and I'm a uh, third year culture, history and society major at LEC. My name is Elisa. Uh, my parents are Dutch and Turkish, but I grew up in the United States and I'm a second year majoring in Earth, Energy and Sustainability. Wonderful. And I actually see some questions have already come in. Shall we just start firing away? Absolutely. All right. So, Yuri, this is a question for you from Jason. When do you have to decide on your major? Before you enter the university or? No. So you decide on your major most of the times at the end of your first year. And even after, there's some flexibility still within your second year. But uh, the, the, the choice to make for your major is really at the end of your first year. So you do have the time to just get used to LEC, to see what it is like, what these courses are like. As I mentioned, you have a bunch of electives. Those are actually meant to give you that opportunity to uh, explore LEC a bit more. So don't worry about it yet. You don't have to know anything. I don't even think you have to 
tell anything about it in your applications, right? Like that's also not necessary. We ask for an indication, yeah. but it's not a basis for selection. Yeah. And, and it will never be uh, hold against you if you change your mind. Yeah. Yes. Actually, I think Lucy's question ties in with that quite well. She's asking, is it possible to choose core major courses in the first year as electives? If so, can one choose only 100 level courses? Yeah. So the idea in your first year is that you take these 100 level courses. So for everybody that's not familiar with this, indeed, our courses are subdivided in three different levels, uh, often the Second, the 200 and the 300 level follow in each other. So you take a 100 level course and then a 200 and a 300. In your first year, you can choose 100 level courses, which gives you a very good introduction to the topics that are discussed in the uh, majors. Now, if you're very sure that you, what you want to do in LEC and you know that you're going to pick your major, then perhaps in your uh, uh, fourth block, for example, you can pick a 200 level if you already did the 100 level one, but that's more discussed on a one-on-one -on -one basis and that's not really the norm. Uh, mostly you just take these 100 level courses and actually we do encourage you to, to explore these different majors as well, right? Like we want you to see uh, to, to, to see these your, your interests through different perspectives. So it's also not a shame to do maybe a completely different elective. Yeah. And I think it's good that you mentioned also that you discuss this together with someone. So we right. have study advisors yeah. that will help you in the process of putting together your study plan, particularly for year two and year three. So they'll help guide you through that as well. Yeah. And um, besides your study advisors, as I mentioned, like the, the, since there's such a um, low ratio of faculty and staff, uh, or affecting students, you really get to know your teachers as well. And there's a lot of opportunity to discuss things with them. Um, and they are more than happy to help with it too. You're actually living in the building that they work in, which is a very interesting concept as well. Yeah. Yes, right. there is some separation though. There like is some you separation. Live with the, the, the staff members don't go to the residential just to, floors. Just to show how, like, how, how close people are together. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I think this is actually a good moment to ask our students to explore or to tell us a bit about how they came to choose their major. Do you want to start, Jill? Yeah, sure. So for me, it was quite an obvious choice. So I kind of knew from the beginning that I was interested in um, the humanities, the social sciences, and that uh, culture history and society was for me, but I still doubted it and I still questioned it throughout my first year. So I still took um, elective courses um, of my choice outside of culture history and society, so like in different majors before actually choosing uh, my major. And uh, um, it was really interesting and I still do take uh, classes outside of my major even though I chose culture history and society and so I do like that opportunity that flexibility that LEC gives you um, in your curriculum choice but um, yeah I decided to stick um, to culture history and society because that is uh, in the end what I'm most interested uh, in personally. Do you have a specific focus or can you give an example of something you really enjoyed? Um, in a culture, in my major. Yes, in your yeah. major. So um, I think something really nice to know is that um, um, all the different majors have uh, tracks. So those are like, um, you know, like in the case of culture, history, and society, we have three main tracks. Those are culture, cultural studies, history, and society, so social studies. So you'll always have tracks within the majors. You don't necessarily, depending on the major, you don't necessarily, or you do have to complete different tracks, but that gives you the opportunity to um, specialize uh, a little bit within the major. So you'll have, um, as Yuhi mentioned, there's different levels of courses. So for example, uh, I myself have um, finished the, by now, the um, history track in, in the culture, history, and society major. So I've taken a lot of courses from different levels um, that relate to history in one way or another. And so that gives you the opportunity to kind of um, narrow uh, down a little bit within um, your major, which is still very broad, um, as you can imagine. All right. And what about you, Elisa? Yeah, so I definitely came to LUC knowing that I wanted to major in Earth, Energy and Sustainability. But during my first year, I did take um, a Governance, Economics and Development combined with Earth, Energy and Sustainability course to see um, that perspective of it as well. And then I also, out of nowhere, really took Social Theory in Everyday Life <laughs> on top of taking Environmental Science, Earth System Science. Um, and I'm also interested in Culture History Society. Even next block, I'm taking one International Justice course, International Environmental Law, and Infrastructure, Art and Culture, a CHS course. So again, like 
yes, I came here knowing that I wanted to do earth energy and sustainability, but I also really want to take advantage of the fact that you can explore so many different subjects, and really they are relevant to your major, although they're not part of it, technically. Um, so I'm taking advantage of it, and I, but earth energy and sustainability is yeah. in my heart. <laughs> If I can add to that, th yeah. that's really because of the first year program, right? So indeed, these are not just random courses you're taking, which don't have any interconnections. No, because we give you that foundation in the first year program, you are able to connect everything and to make it into one whole, even though it seems like indeed, like just grab and go where you, mm -hmm. how you built your program. Yeah. Nice. All right. I think that gives a pretty good insight uh, into the various possibilities. Uh, let's see some more questions that have come in. Alice is asking, where can we find the different electives there are? Oh, those are actually on our website, but they're a little bit hidden. So when you go to um, on the left hand side in the LUC program page, there's a button that says program. And then when you go there, uh, you'll find something called the e-prospectus. It's on the right hand side on that actual page. Um, you can also pop this question into the other chat box, the one that's kind of gold colored, um, because Sheila is managing the chat and she will probably be able to grab you a link to the e-prospectus and drop it for you there. So it is available on our website, but it's just, it, yeah, it links to the environment that the students normally use. And then you can see all the electives that are available and also their descriptions. Um, I have a admissions question. Is there a limit on Cambridge proficiency tests? If so, where can we access this information? I'm not sure I fully understand the question. Maybe you uh, mean to ask whether they expire. Uh, we do get this question a lot about Cambridge tests because normally IELTS and TOEFL tests expire within two years. Cambridge claims it doesn't expire, but I think we don't want it to be older than two years. Um, so if you uh, if yours is slightly older, my advice to you would be to get in touch with our admissions team. Uh, you can actually find the contact details on the website or you can email the general email address and they will forward it to admissions so they can have a look at your specific situation and advise you whether they want you to take a test again or not. Uh, another admissions question, Cassandra is asking, I took a gap year, does that change my application in any way? Should I specify it anywhere? Um, I can go ahead and answer this one as well, unless you guys want to. Yeah, I just, what I would say on this is, um, again, it, and it's part to the, the admissions and what makes you a good fit, that a gap year gives you the perfect opportunity to do all of these different things from only your academic pursuit, right? Uh, and we're looking for more than just your grade in mathematics or, or, or any other course um, so yeah doing a gap year I can imagine actually gives you a lot of uh, great experiences that can contribute to your education at LUC yeah exactly so you just work it into your application uh, yeah. don't leave it out because we'll wonder what you did during that year so just write about it write about your experiences um, and then get yeah let us get to know you a bit Um, Alicia is asking, what kind of different jobs do students normally get after completing this bachelor? I, that's a very, very valid and good question, but also a difficult one to answer. Do you want to give a stab at it? Um, yeah, um, I, I, I see BA, so I'm, I assume a Bachelor of Arts you are specifically interested in. Um, let me just at first say there you can do any, I've, I've seen every possible job uh, when I look at my fellow alumni or just at the alumni right now uh, there's no specific thing there's of course a lot of people if you do world politics they go into international relation uh, type of job so either they work for for a government body at home or, or in the Netherlands or wherever they are uh, or at a embassy or something like that that's the sort of obvious um, uh, job prospects but you can go into journalism if you do the sustainability things there's a lot of consultancy work that's that's out there I've seen people that start their own companies uh, that are entrepreneurs right now literally anything possible that you're passionate about um, I don't know if you maybe have examples um. Yeah, I'm not sure if I have uh, specific examples, but just to add on to that, I think that, um, yeah, it's a hard question to, to answer indeed, yeah. but uh, that's because um, whatever you do after LEC depends on whatever you do within L or like throughout your three years at LEC. So you have the opportunity to do so much and to discover so many different passions and interests. And so the interests and passions that you discover and, and whatever you do academically also at the college will Uh, impact in one way or another what you do after. So it is true that um, most uh, students, so the majority of, of, of graduates, uh, follow a master's afterwards. 
uh, like right after uh, LEC. Um, but that's not necessarily the case for everyone. So it is very common in Europe, I know, to take a master's after, after your bachelor's. Um, but in other parts of the world, I think it's also common to go straight into a PhD or to like go straight into the job market. So um, yeah, it's just there are a lot of opportunities and just a lot of um, uh, choices that you can make after LEC. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think you guys gave a really good insight into uh, what that is, although it still seems probably broad for people because that's what it is. It's a really yeah. broad bachelor. I've, I've seen everything from a PhD in physics, theoretical physics, to indeed journalism and, and being an anthropologist, like every, every single aspect of the job market yeah. yeah i think also it's good to remember that a lot of people are really focused on oh, okay i'm going to do a bachelor and i'm going to get into a specific field and if i don't make the right choice then it's going to be a disaster and sometimes parents can make you feel that way as well however um when you take a step back the bachelor is often a phase where you're still maturing a lot and you're exploring yourself a lot and you know when you ask people uh, our age and you're like do you remember exactly what you did in your bachelor no it's the skills that you gain it's the yeah. critical thinking that you gain it's about the environment that you're in of course if you want to become a doctor go for medicine if you want to become you know uh, a psychologist really consider just enrolling in the psychology program but for a lot of people the bachelor is a great way to discover yourself find out what your interests are build a lot of really strong skills and the beauty about our program is that uh because it's such a in-depth um it's such a yeah how do you explain that it's such an intensive experience we ask you to work quite hard but we also therefore help you develop really strong skills a lot of students when they do their master they say oh this is actually quite easy like yep. because the preparation is so strong yeah. so it puts you on a trajectory and we also have graduates who do their masters in the netherlands outside the netherlands we have mas uh, people doing masters at places like oxford for example um so it gives you an indication of where you can go yeah, it's LEC is not limiting. It's uh, on the other end, I would say it's like uh, actually amplifying wherever you can go, right? Like it gives you that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that was a really long answer, <laughs> but I I hope that it, I think a lot of audience members want to get an idea yeah. of that. So, Absolutely. um, Sarah's asking whether you can do a semester abroad. Who wants to answer that one? Yeah. I, you can go. Nope, go ahead. Okay. Um, a semester abroad is definitely possible. Um, it takes place for everyone um, has the opportunity to take the semester abroad in their third year and that would be the first semester of their third year um, and for that I have friends who are all over the world it's actually wild how we all met mm -hmm. in the small country of the Netherlands and now I see people posting in the Philippines in Chile in Japan and it's very interesting to see that these people that I felt like so close to physically, literally my neighbors, are now across the world um, studying um, subjects that LUC also doesn't um, offer all the time. So a lot of people, they study abroad and they do um, courses or they take elective courses in other classes that might offer them a different perspective. But I hear that usually it, it goes pretty smoothly and, and LUC is... Uh, prepares them well for studying abroad as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's the only thing I always hear is that in Singapore the the pace is higher, but that's <laughs> oh. the only place that I've heard that about. So, yeah, maybe to add to this, so so the, I know this is not technically speaking maybe studying abroad again, but you can also do this in Wageningen and uh, Amsterdam and Delft. So there are students that study abroad within the Netherlands still, yeah. but then follow a minor, for example, in some of these universities, which can also be very beneficial to uh, the program, right? Like if to get an extra sort of in-depth experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. study at another Dutch university and yeah. be like, oh, this is very similar yet very different. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I think it also answers Kaho's question because they are asking uh, whether it's possible to take courses from other departments outside of liberal arts and sciences. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it is definitely common. Uh, and uh, like, I think this does answer the question. So you do have that opportunity, um, not in your first year, though. So in your first year, you are expected to take courses only at the college. But then throughout your second and third year, um, depending on how you organize your own uh, studies, your own study plan, um, you do have the opportunity to take courses uh, in other faculties of Leiden University or in other, um, really any other university um, within the Netherlands and you also have the opportunity to study abroad. So usually how this looks like is that you will have um, 
a, a free semester. So that's in, usually in your third year, the first semester will be free for you to choose what you want to do. If you want to do a minor in other university, if you want to still take classes at the college, if you want to go abroad um, to like any university in the world that has a partnership with um, Leiden University. So there are a lot of opportunities and it is definitely common to take classes outside of LEC. I'm myself, I'm taking a um, a minor right now at um, Erasmus University in Rotterdam, so that is pretty common uh, for sure. And maybe to add to that, that's also a semester that students sometimes organize an internship for themselves, yeah. part-time or full-time. We can give a little bit of credit for that, so that's also a possibility and that's a really nice way to also get some real experience. You wanted to add something, Elisa? Yeah. Um, I also wanted to say that there are also other opportunities for students who have like a specific musical interest or arts interest. Yes. Um, I'm actually doing the Praktika Musicae program with the Royal Conservatory organized by Leiden University. And there I um, take classes three times a week at the conservatory for classical voice. So if you're also um, a musician, they also offer like jazz um, as well. Um, that's another opportunity and you get to study at the conservatory, you also get credits that transfer into LUC for this, and you can study there for free. And I believe the Royal Academy of Arts also has a program like this for photography or, um, yeah, more painting, painting, yeah. fine arts, yeah, fine arts, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, and that has been a really amazing opportunity for me as well. So, just wanted to add that. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's really, it's a liberal arts and sciences college and that arts comes very well across in these two collaborations in the ha within the Hague indeed. Yeah, although people, it's sometimes confusing terminology as well because absolutely. in the Netherlands yeah. when you say art, people are like, oh, so you're studying art, kunst. Yeah. But actually in America, the liberal arts just means the widest range of the social and humanity sciences. Exactly. So it's but Come. for sure also still in that context things like like fine arts and, and musical arts but but also we were already talking about the pantomime for example like this is also one of these places where that comes uh, or puts in place in, in the program right like we want to foster these these creative opportunities for you yeah and I think by now also because we hinted that there would be someone from the pantomime on the panel I think everyone can guess who it is now yeah. <laughs> Um, but I do see there are a lot of other questions yes. coming in. So let's tackle some of them. So Daniel has asked if there are opportunities for scholarships. We do have partial scholarships available and we're quite unique in the sense that we look at your need. So we look at need-based scholarships. So we'll ask you to submit a financial plan um, and then we'll determine how much financial support we can give. It is important to be aware that we do not give full scholarships like the United States does. So it is always a, a part uh, to, to help contribute to your to your costs. Um, and then similarly, how feasible is it to work a job alongside studying at LUC? I think you guys are in the best position to answer that. Jill, maybe you want to start? Yeah, so I've actually been uh, working since uh, semester two of my first year. So it is, it is feasible and a lot of people do it. A lot of students do uh, work a job, a part-time job um, outside of LUC. It is quite easy to find a job, even as an international, because um, the Hague is quite an international city and there are a lot of jobs that don't even um, require you to, to speak uh, um, Dutch. So it is easy to, to do it. Um, or, I mean, it is easy to find a job. It's not necessarily easy to, you know, work a job like alongside your studies. So that's, that's kind of a skill that you, I guess, get acquainted to um, as you go. So it, it took me a while to actually get used to it because it is like, it can be a lot of hours. It is like tiring to to do it on top of your studies and like as was mentioned lec is quite intense and and quite fast-paced so it's a skill that you acquire um um so yeah i think that's really just my answer for now it is something that you can try out and and see if it works for you and uh, um yeah i think that actually ties quite well into Nora's question who's been asking about the workload. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Because I think maybe we've scared people with saying, oh, it's an intense program and it gives you great skills, but is it doable? Yeah, so um, it is an intense program for sure, but it also like the time that you spend um, working outside of class and, and studying and preparing for class, it's also up to you. So um, you choose how much you want to do, you choose how, you know, how much uh, effort you want to put into your studies and and you kind of prioritize between your classes and and work and like extracurriculars even what exactly you want to do and dedicate to so it is 
month. Like you do have to dedicate a lot to your studies, usually, and that's very personal, I think. You'll have um, 12 hours of classes uh, per week. That's, that's how it, it usually looks like at LEC. And I will usually myself expect to spend, including this 12 hours a week, 40 hours a week with um, studying and uh, um, going to class. So that's kind of like a full, full-time job. So there's assignments, there's uh, readings and preparation for class. Um, so um, you do have to do a lot. You decide how much you do. Then, um, you know, like often your week will look like your weeks will look differently. Um, so like you'll have more assignments in one week than, than another. Usually the final week of the block is what we call reading week. So you'll have like your final essays, final assignments, final exams even to, to, to take. Um, and so, of course, I would expect to spend more time in like midterm weeks or, or uh, final weeks um, than, than in usual weeks, but it really, it kind of is up to you. But do keep in mind that it is an intense program and it can be extra challenging if you do want to add the extra challenge uh, to your studies. I think that's kind of, uh, yeah, what I'd say. Do you want to add anything from the teacher perspective? Yeah, and I mean, there, there's, a, there's an educational purpose in making it a bit more intense right there i think there are two things you're completely right um additionally to it if you're if you're if you, your mother tongue is not english uh, that's a challenge at first probably in the first year that you have to mm -hmm. get acquainted to if your uh high school didn't teach you or it wasn't very focused on writing a lot and presenting a lot this might be a challenge in the beginning because we immediately ask you to do all of these things to write reflections to pres give presentations so those are also additional uh, intensities that come across but it provides you a lot. Additionally, we have these small classes, so you know from each other when you haven't done your work, right? So that all gives like that extra uh, workload to it that a normal program doesn't have, uh, mostly in the Netherlands. However, again, the benefits of it and how much you learn are tremendous. So I would say you, you probably have to get used to it, but, but it's for the better. Yeah. It also helps keep you on track, right? Because Absolutely. the program does some stuff for you that otherwise you would have to do yourself. Yes. Like motivating to yeah. keep doing the work, that's in place a little bit. Yeah, and there's that extra pressure. But then again, because the, there's such a personal relationship between you and your professor, or like since that relationship is closer, instead of you just being a number in a big lecture hall, yeah. um, you do feel like you're learning more. Like there's, a, there's like we're, we want to help you to, to, to become a better person in that sense. So yeah. Um, yeah, I think indeed that gives both the motivation plus it makes it fun. It, it, it's just nice to have that. Yeah, yeah it's fun to learn. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think it also answers Angelica's question. Yes, the program is taught yeah. fully in English. You do yeah. not have to know any Dutch. Um, there is another question for Jill uh, from Rashad, who I guess has spoken to you on Unibody, yeah. who's asking <laughs> uh, 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 about the global challenges in your first year. Which mm. one intrigued you the most? Yeah, so that's a, that's actually a hard question. So I actually did really enjoy, even though I've mentioned before, I am kind of more of a humanities and social sciences person. I definitely enjoyed, um, you know, getting in touch with other subjects and, and studying all the global challenges that we study at the college. So um, I really liked I really liked the sustainability uh, class, uh, for example. It really did um, introduce me to kind of a more scientific. Um, discourse on on sustainability, which I was not necessarily um, very into or very familiarized with, um, but I don't know. I don't think I can answer that question uh, like that directly. Do you have a, a better answer, maybe? Mm -hmm. I think one of the global challenges that interested me the most was peace and justice because it was really different than anything I've studied before. Um, like in high school, I did do some diversity related work in my English class or um, sustain like earth energy and sustainability I was familiar with because I took environmental science. But peace and justice, I think, introduced for me to me the first time of like actually thinking about um, like international conflict, because most of the time my exposure to that has been reading the news, and that always stressed me out a lot. So I, I couldn't even like read too much into it because I found it so like emotionally taxing in a way. But t having a global challenge class on peace and justice and actually studying these issues was really interesting to me because it almost forced me to like come to terms with these situations. Um, and I really was interested and enjoyed that experience because it made me think. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, really one of the strong points of the, the liberal arts and sciences part of the program, right? Where you, you do get the tools to understand some of the, these things that you see in the news, whether it's yeah. conflict, climate change, uh, racism. Um, you really start to see this, these problems from a broader perspective and try to, you're not defeated anymore by the complexity of it. So mm -hmm. it becomes understandable and then you can start thinking about solutions. All right, I just got the notification that we have only a couple minutes left. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of questions here on the screen. Some were asked 20 minutes ago. So we have to speed it up a bit and see how many we can get through. So Sarah is asking, uh, she wants to apply by the 1st of December, but doesn't have her grades yet. Uh, and she's worried that maybe her predicted grades are not uh, uh, a good reflection of what she can achieve. So my advice to everyone who's looking uh, at this presentation and who's wondering about that, you can apply with your grades you've achieved so far. You can also submit your predicted grades if your system provides them, but a lot of systems don't, so that's also okay. Um, if you really think that you will, uh, you're very far below our requirement, then it's good to mention that in your motivation letter or get your teacher to say something about that in your reference letter. Because yes, if you're really, really far below, then that might be a reason for the committee not to uh, uh, allow you to go to the interview round. However, if you're a little bit below, then they will definitely take you into consideration because it's a holistic approach. So don't be uh, defeated by this or don't be worried. And if you just want our admissions team to give you some advice again like i said send them an email they're very happy to look at that it's still fairly quiet at the moment as well so they have time to respond to your questions quickly so please don't be afraid to do that or if you're scared to email them send a message to our uni buddies jill is one of them on the website and he can also help direct you to the right person uh, Nelly's asking about the capstone project. I think, Yuri, you're in the best position to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, the capstone is a very cool thing at LEC. It's, as I mentioned in the presentation earlier, it's at the end of their third year, you're, uh, you're doing this one big bachelor thesis type of project. Uh, and um, the way it works is that you, you, you choose a professor that you have had some courses with, for example, or that you... Uh, that, that aligns with your interest and together with the, uh, that person you're uh, starting basically your own small research project so you come up with a question a method of studying that question uh, you get the results and then you r write all of that up in a bachelor thesis this really gives you the opportunity to dive into a topic very specifically so even uh, if if the program itself is really broad this gives you if there's like one particular course that you really liked and a particular maybe reading or case study this gives you the chance to go fully in depth on that and really study everything about it um, for some people this is a like a they want to do this the whole year and they go very broad and like uh, come up with this great like research paper some it's just like a semester thing it's really dependent on what your interests are also outside of LEC right if you if you're very interested in doing more academic work then that this is like your chance to to show that uh, I hope that answered the question a little bit it's really up to you what you make out of it yeah, as long as you meet the standards and exactly. it's academically sound and you yeah. use the techniques, then yeah, the yeah. world is your oyster. During graduation, we always print the bachelor thesis title on the slide right. with yeah. the person and it's I love it. Mm -hmm. Last year, there was someone who did research about something related to nipple hair, but it had a really, it was very cool. It was related to something with the global public health, but it's just. And this is it, right? Like it gets very specific and you can very clearly see like what were somebody's personal interests within LEC. And then you yeah. see how diverse the program is. Yeah. And also it's an opportunity to go interdisciplinary because that's one of our key points as well. So if you actually want to combine different disciplines in your thesis, you also can. Yeah. Um, and I think Caho has a fantastic question for us to finish off with. Well, maybe we'll, have time for one more, we'll see. What do you think is unique about LUC compared to other university colleges in the Netherlands? I wanna start with Elisa this time. Sure, the main thing that I've noticed that's unique is its community. Really, really strong community. I went to the um, inter-university college tournament last year, and I mean, I think we were all cheering the loudest, and we had a, actually like one of the largest groups of people, despite being one of the smallest university colleges in the Netherlands. I think like we have um, 600 students, yeah. Um, but a lot of us were there, and we all came to support everyone who was playing in volleyball and even my friend and I we competed in improv theater and we had 
maybe 15 LUC students in this small classroom with all the university colleges cheering on for us. And it, it felt so random, but also so wholesome in a sense. You know, we're all cheering together under this one university and you really get to know each other. And yeah, you really get to know your floor as well. Like we have dinners with our floors. We study with a lot of my like floor mates. And I really think the community is one of the things that stands out to me the most. Nice. What is it for you, Jill? Yeah, I think that is a great answer, actually. And I do really, really appreciate my time at LEC for the community uh, building and just the spirit of, or like this sense of belonging to, to a greater community, of belonging to LEC. No matter what your background is, no matter who you are, you will find a place at LEC and you'll feel like you belong uh, very easily, I think. Uh, then academically, I would say that uh, what sets us apart is... Um, in my opinion, really the global challenges approach to, to our curriculum. So you'll see that that's something that doesn't happen at other university colleges, at other programs. Maybe they'll have other uh, focuses or other kinds of lenses to their curriculum. In our case, this global challenges lenses will really give you a, as we've been talking um, uh, for the past hour, will really give you this um, um, global thinking and like structure thinking lenses to uh, uh, what you're going to do, um, whatever you, you end up doing. All right, now it's up to you to, to add what we're missing. No, I think this is, this, these were great answers. And indeed, academically, it's the global challenges that sets us apart, which in other universities you don't have that, and the location of The Hague, which for, like, that gives a lot of opportunities for guest lectures and stuff like that. Yeah, plus it's a really fun, nice, beautiful, great city mm -hmm. and a Amen. amazing location yes. yeah well we want to thank all of you for your great questions your interaction i also want to thank our panel for their fantastic answers you can find jill on unibody on our website but you can also chat with sheila on the button here uh, on this platform she's very happy to share her experiences um feel free to join some of our other activities and my final piece of advice would be don't be shy don't be intimidated this is a great environment and just reach out to us we're happy to help answer your questions. Don't be intimidated by the admissions process because really we're all humans and we want the best for you. Thank you so much. Thank you panel. Of course. And see you later hopefully. Goodbye.